Hey there, folks. I'm... As part of my wall-mounted computer build, I disassembled Gigabyte Gaming Overclocked RTX 4090 so that I could install an EK water block for significantly enhanced cooling. I wanted to separate that content out into its own short tutorial video to help others who might be interested in that, while also eliminating the burden of what Paul Harvey might call the rest of the story. Therefore, in this shorter segment, I'll demonstrate how I disassemble this particular GPU without any extra fluff. If you have already watched episode 3 of my wall-mounted computer build and are only interested in the disassembly, this video won't contain any new content for you. If you are also interested in the reassembly with the EK water block, do check out episode 3 of the GES series. The Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4090 Gaming Overclocked has the WinForce triple fan setup, pushing the dimensions of the GPU with the OEM fans and heatsink to 5 and a quarter inches tall, 13 and 1 half inches long, and 3 inches deep. After preparing a work area, I'll lay the card face down with the back of the GPU facing up and remove these 13 screws. The tiny warranty voided sticker is located on the top of this particular screw. These screws hold the stock fan assembly to the GPU. With these screws removed, I'll flip the GPU back over with the fans facing up and start to work them free. To remove the fans easily, apply downward force on the I.O. bracket and upward force on the bottom of the fan at the same time. There are two positions on the I.O. bracket that are prime real estate to apply this pressure. This area at the bottom of the bracket and this area at the top of the bracket. Start by applying downward pressure on the I.O. bracket and upward pressure on the bottom of the fan housing and, once you encounter resistance, hold the position for about 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, switch positions on the I.O. bracket and apply the same bi-directional pressure. There's no reason you couldn't apply pressure in both of these positions at the same time, but doing so could result in a sudden dislodging of the fan assembly that can be jarring. I like the control of doing one edge at a time so that a controlled dismount is more likely, according to how aggressive I am with the pressure. Continue this alternating pattern until the rear posts pry free from the thermal pads. Once the initial separation occurs, apply downward pressure at these locations and continue the alternating pressure pattern on the I.O. bracket. Do not apply pressure directly to the PCIe connector, but higher up on the PCB area. Soon the whole assembly will pry free and fold apart from the main board. With the fan housing sitting in this position, remove these three connectors toward the end of the card and the entire fan assembly and heatsink will be free from the PCB, leaving us with this. On the front of the PCB, remove these seven screws. If you are going to be adding the EK RTX 4090 Master Water Block after disassembly, you need to keep the screw from this position handy. Once those screws are removed, tip the card up and remove the four very tiny screws from the I.O. bracket. Once again, if installing the EK RTX 4090 Master Water Block, save these four screws for later steps. Once the four I.O. bracket screws have been removed, lay the card back down and apply a gentle bit of pressure at the four corners of the card between the PCB and the backplate metal to loosen the bonding from the backside thermal pads. After the card separates from the metal backplate, the bare card without the fan assembly or backplate measures roughly 8 and 5 eighths inches long by 5 inches tall. Next we'll proceed to cleaning by removing all of the factory thermal pads from the front and back of the card. I use the flat side of an orange wood nail stick to very lightly scrape the pad material from the components. Some folks will douse the whole card with a cleaning solution, usually alcohol, and use a small paintbrush or toothbrush to scrub the entire surface of the card. This can certainly work, but I prefer the control and approach of cleaning what was dirty, as opposed to making everything dirty and needing to clean everything. To remove the factory thermal paste from the die, use 91% alcohol and a fistful of Q-tips. We really want to get as close to a mirror finish as possible on the die itself. It's not absolutely necessary to clean around and between the SMD surrounding the die, as the factory thermal paste isn't conductive, but I generally will give them a once over with a high quality watercolor paintbrush and 91% isopropyl alcohol. However, they can be safely ignored if working around such tiny circuitry is anxiety inducing. With the die cleaned up, I'll now use Q-tips and alcohol on each of the VRMs, MOSFETs, and memory that had factory thermal pads on them. Once all the components have been wiped down, I'll very lightly go over the whole card with a can of air to dry up any lingering alcohol and remove any thermal pad remnants. 
That completes the disassembly of the Gigabyte Gaming Overclocked RTX 4090. From this point, you can proceed to mounting whatever cooling device you've selected. If you'd like to see how I mount and modify the EK RTX 4090 Master Water Block for this particular GPU, feel free to check out Episode 3 of my GES series. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, thanks for watching, and out.